My name is Sharon Sanders. I've been an activist uh, for longer than I can remember. I won't go into all of the organizations I'm part of because I think in my presentation it, it may come out uh, basically where I'm at. Now what I've done, and I'm going to ask your help on this, we had a meeting of Move to Amend last Monday, and I, I see a significant problem in this sense, and I'm trying to write something that will make sense for everybody. The issue with this is it's so complicated, it is so complicated, and I have the problem of not being able to segment myself and just see everything globally. And it's hard to break this down for people. So what happens at a meeting like Monday, we have new people coming in and uh, we have an agenda, but they don't know what Citizens United is. We have to start the process all over again. So I'm working on, many, many people have no idea what it is. It's amazing. So what I'm doing is working on sort of, a, not a presentation, but maybe even a handout, much shorter than what I'm going to do here now. I worked on this, and I, I, what I want from you is actually a real critique on this afterwards, if this makes any sense whatsoever. Because to me, everything is connected. So I just, I entitled this, uh, The Evolution of Move to Amend Greater Chicago, and it takes in an awful lot of issues. Now, if I go too long on it, it's three pages, let me know, I can stop. <laughs> well, double-spaced. <laughs> okay, fine. Well, almost three years ago, several of us who were politically active in the northern suburbs were talking about the deliberate attempt by the right-wing side of the Supreme Court via their decision in Citizens United versus, versus the FEC to allow wealthy individuals and corporations to indirectly spend unlimited amounts of money in support of any politician or candidate who voted in their best interest rather than that of their constituents. This was done through what are known as super PACs. These independent expenditures did not have to be made public. They, well, there's a rule that they, after three months, they can do it, but they don't. Um, or they should do it, but they don't. But the money, at least legally, could not be given directly to a politician. Now the Supreme Court has a case pending, if you've heard about it, which if they vote in favor of it, and most likely will, it will allow these same wealthy individuals and corporations unlimited direct spending to the candidate, as well as indirect spending would be at the super PAC. So they're going to cover all their bases. The Citizens United decision also declared the corporation had First Amendment rights of speech and personhood, and that it was just fine for money to buy speech, meaning that if you had millions to spend, on commercials for or against a candidate, the sky was the limit, and as we know, such commercials were often full of character assassinations, outright lies, and, um, and actually, you know, misin misinformation, much of that. Rather than talking about the candidate, they talk about their, their opponent in negative ways. One of their arguments was that the American public was smart enough to discern the truth, and what they didn't say is that corporate-owned media loves the millions it receives in revenue from the big super PAC uh, commercials. And so they tell the public only what they wanted to hear and therefore cherry pick the messages, which is probably why most people I've talked to have never heard of Citizens United, and if they have, they don't know how to see a connection to that. Education on the subject is sorely uh, lacking in terms of the general public, and so I see this as our main focus. Within a short time after the decision, we noticed that an organization entitled Move to Amend was starting to build a national base with the single goal of overturning Citizens United. We decided to start a group in Northbrook, then some of us met with people in Chicago, then Oak Park, Avon Township, and new groups were starting to spread and sprout all over the state thanks to the dedicated uh, activists like Terry, like Steve Alish, uh, and many others, including Move to Amend itself. Now there are approximately seven affiliates in Illinois and new ones are coming on board all the time. But we still need uh, many more so that everyone has a physical place to go to in Illinois. It's a big state and nobody wants to be on conference calls all the time. Um, and the same is occurring in every state in the nation are building their networks of, of affiliates. In addition as to how to best form groups was the question of how to best overturn Citizens United. But the process of overturning is daunting and can take a very long time. Two-thirds of Congress first has to approve an amendment, and then it has to be sent back to the states where three-quarters of three-fourths of the states have to affirm it. So have I already lost you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> MTA National proposed an amendment we could all work on together. But meanwhile, the idea was to educate the public by getting non-binding resolutions passed at all levels of government. And I stress non-binding because it's very, very confusing that people are signing you know, hundreds of petitions. Um, 
we, the idea was to educate the public by getting non-binding resolutions passed at all levels of government, as well as a question on many of local ballots with a yes or no answer as to whether the voters thought, and again, I'm going to stop here because I, you know, I can see this is three pages, corporations were people and money should buy speech, and on some ballots, whether there should be limits on campaign spending. These resolutions were placed on last November's ballots, and, every, and in every case, approximately three quarters of them or more voted yes on the question. Thanks to Alderman Joe Moore, the city of Chicago passed a resolution and agreed to place the question on the ballot. <coughs> However, keep in mind that these are all non-binding resolutions. They are basically education tools, and no, none of our proposal will ever be binding. The only thing that's binding is the actual amendment, if they ever do that. The reason people can sign as many petitions as they want from different organizations is because they are not a legal entity. They, these are all efforts to show Congress, the states, and the Supreme Court that we mean business, but change can only be affected by Congress and the state legislatures. What gets even more confusing is that Loop to Amend is not the only group planning on introducing an amendment. Several amendments have been already proposed in both houses of Congress, but have been barely noticed and essentially ignored. Senator Durbin and Udall, Bernie Sanders, Al Franken, and others now uh, are now or have already proposed such amendments. In my opinion, the only thing that will get to us to succeed is if the voters understand what's at stake and say to their elected officials, either you will represent us or we'll vote you out. And to me, that ultimately is what has to be done. So assign till your hearts are content and pass the word on to others. It doesn't matter. It matters that you get involved at some level and tell your friends, relatives, neighbors. We're all in the process of building databases so we can call on people at a moment's notice to take a specific action. It's still early in the game, and at some point you may be asked to sign petitions with a notary. If you ever do that, you can only sign one, because if that would be a valid initiative, uh, still non-binding, but they'll be thrown out, uh, thrown out if there's more than one sign. So you don't want to do that as soon as you see a notary on a petition, which may happen. We're not sure about that. Okay, <laughs> MTA also has been doing education tours and telling people how they can get involved in the negative impact of the Citizens United decision and the many ways power, money, and greed is impacting all our lives. Now, to, can I go on? Or okay. okay. You want me to? No, it's okay. fine. Sure. Now to further add to the confusion. Last summer, I proposed that we needed to work on other facets of, expo of exposing the corruption and protecting the voters' rights. That working, on that working on an amendment was and is very important, but wasn't enough. So we formed a coalition of groups to overturn Citizens United and work for education reform. And we keep adding many impressive organizations who are doing great things to help protect our rights. These include Common Cause, Public Citizen, Illinois PERG, Democracy in Action Chicago, Progressive Democrats of Northeast Illinois, Move On, and many others. We are always trying to extend this coalition. We are working on getting bipartisan groups as well, and that is difficult. Not only do the Democrats not understand it, but Republicans are worried about the unions. This seems to be the greatest fear for some reason, that uh, the unions will, will keep their power and money rights, and the uh, corporations will lose it. So that they're concerned, and that's all being misled. You know, it's not true. Um, so we are working, the, these groups all have more than one mission. All the others except move to amend, so they're voting on, they're working on voters' rights uh, and all kinds of things. Um, these groups all have more than one mission, but they all agree that we can no longer function as a viable democracy without campaign finance reform, limits on spending, paper ballot trails, and we need to stop voter harassment, unfair voter ID laws, extraordinary long lines at the polls, political party gerrymandering from both sides of the aisle, phone calls that misinform voters as to the date and place of voting, rigged voting machines, and so on. Meanwhile, the coalition members meet once a month, usually in an area that is almost central to people coming from the farthest places in the world. Each group is going about advocating to get money out of politics in various ways. But as a coalition, we've all agreed to try and get a resolution passed in the state legislature. Um, which, by the way, today it was, uh, it was introduced by a, a Democrat, um, Stether, uh, Heather Staines, uh, Senator Staines, and also a Republican, Pam Althoff. So we are, am I wrong in that? No, we had one. Oh, we did? Another Republican. Okay, so we've got two Republicans, and that's a big, big thing. 
We've been, people in our coalition have worked for a long time to try to get that. Heather Staines had requested that we do that. And even though it was Democratic dominated on state, she, she felt that it was important for the message. Who's the other uh, representative? It was Heather Staines, Pam Altoff, and the, this McConaughey, I don't know how to spell it, McConaughey? Yeah, McConaughey. Yeah, McConaughey. McConaughey. And, and they're both Republicans. Right. And they're saying, this is in the Senate. In the Senate, yeah, right. Yeah, we're starting with the Senate. I'm almost done. I'm getting there. So, as of today, Democratic <coughs> Senator Heather Staines and Republican Senator Pam Altoff agreed to co-sponsor a joint resolution in the state of Illinois legislature clarifying that corporations and other artificial entities are not people with constitutional rights and that money is property, not speech, and therefore can be regulated. Again, a reminder, it's not binding, but it's pushing we we're getting the notice of Congress and the Supreme Court that we're beginning to organize and say, you cannot keep doing this, we hope. I also want to stress that our goal in meet an MTA and the coalition is, again, is to be nonpartisan. However, we have a long way to go in terms of bringing Republicans and independents on board, even though cutting social programs, vouchers for Medicare or the CPI for Social Security and Medicaid cuts would hurt them as well. They have, and most of them have not gotten that message yet. They wrongly worry that unions will not be affected if CU is overturned. It's hard to get many people of both parties to understand what's happening, and it really, really is. Okay, the last section is, and on the issues, which is my pet. I mean, I, I can't see doing any of this. <laughs> without, this is the last door. <laughs> without talking about the issues, which is, which is my thing. It is my opinion that groups like ALEC, which is the American Legislative Exchange Committee, and its funders, such as the Koch brothers and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, have been set free to write legislation at all levels of government that benefits the wealthy and allows them to spend unlimited amounts of money to support people like Scott Walker, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do a party thing here, and Paul Ryan, who do their bidding. Their goal is clearly to remove social benefits from the individual citizen, limit their voting rights, uh, by vote of all the things we talked about, and they want to privatize, and this is both sides of the aisle, they want to privatize all schools, prisons, infrastructure, college tuitions, uh, and loans, while they poison our food, air, water, drugs, and products by removing or watering down regulation. This is a real concern that money is doing today. Um, they complain about a deficit that has to be fixed while working for socialized corporate welfare and tax loopholes for themselves. They also own many state legislators, literally, and local boards who do their bidding. And this corruption is not owned by the Republicans. There are quite a few Democrats and others who are happy with the status quo and the direction we're heading. So, some would say the issues are not connected to overturning Citizens United. I would strongly disagree. Citizens United was not the direct cause of all the corruption, but it was a big sudden impetus. Unlimited spending, unlimited spending on elections and buying of legislators is now the norm. It's all intertwined, and without tying the issues directly to people's life, my experience has been that they will not stay involved or care. And I believe they do directly affect every the issues affect every citizen. And that is the intent of these laws, to take everything away from the people and hand it to massive corporations and super rich individuals. And I don't care what party you belong to, unless you're up there at the top of the economic scale, you will lose more than you think right now. So what's the only answer to the destruction of our election system and the takeover of our country and our politicians by the super rich and extremists who want an uninformed and uneducated electorate? They can manipulate. The only answer is to push back by the voters but they first have to understand what's happening to them and their rights before it's too late to so we'll come back to education. Thank you for bearing with me on that.